are out. No good, no good, no good. I'm Roberta. And I'm Luca. And for the past year, we have been building our own tiny shipping container house, so we can travel around knowing that we will always have this little place that we can call home. But guess what? We just found our dream project before we expected. This abandoned sailboat. So we are going to stop building the house for a couple months to bring our boat back to life. And then we're going to go back and finish the house. Today is going to be a really important day for us. It's going to be the first time we're going to go out of the marina. And I was organizing things on the boat to be able to leave and I found a problem. There's always a problem. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's, <laughs> it's just boat life is like that. It's just solving problems. So basically we decide not to open the system and we risk to put the boat in the water and check if there was any leak. And when we put the boat on the water, no leak at all. But the shaft was it still was not moving and then that's really easy not to have a leak. Once you start moving is when you're gonna have a leak. Yesterday, as we want to go out today, we left the engine on for a long time, like maybe like an hour, and we gave a lot of throttle just to you know put a lot of uh, force on the engine and we just keep just pulling the floating dock with us for like an hour just to you know warm up the engine and see if something happens and something when you do happened. that <laughs> yeah when you do that you have a lot of cavitation because you're not moving you're just like you know like moving a lot of water around but the boat itself is not moving and now we have some oil leak there I don't know if you can see it's not much but that means that the system is leaking. And can, if, can you show the little yeah. bottle there? If you didn't watch this episode, we c you can watch it here, here, yeah, here. The episode where we talk about the system, this system that is based on this oil tank. And for now, the oil is still on the right level. That means we leak just a little bit of oil. But that might mean that if we run the engine for like 24 hours, we might lose all the oil. And that's not good. I mean, of course, we always could just put more oil, but we don't want that. We're going to go out. We're going to clean this and see if we have more leak. If we have more leak, that's not good news. If we have more leak, we are lucky we are still in Guarujá and we know a guy that can help us to fix this. And also, yesterday, looking through the old stuff from the boat, we found everything we need to fix the system. All the parts, like the bearings, that's a huge bearing and the retentors and everything. We have everything we need in order to fix that. But we don't want to lift the boat out of the water again. But I mean, if we need to do it, we're gonna do it because we are not gonna leave a tail behind, a huge tail behind. But that means that if we do that, we won't be able to leave the marina this year, just next month. But let's hope we're gonna go out today and everything is gonna work out. It's not gonna leak anymore. That's all we can hope, right? Yeah. Now you can see if we have new leaks and now we are ready to go. But first, let me try to see where the leak came from. By the way, Joel, thanks so much for your camera. <laughs> Our friend gave this camera that we reproduce on the phone, see? Let's see. Endoscope camera. Endoscope camera. Can you see that? <laughs> and we are using a lot. We use all the time. When we, we cannot see the problem, we get the camera. It's a beautiful day outside. Time to have lunch. Time for lunch. But first, I need to get some treat because it's a lot. Yeah, it's good. yeah, we're gonna have lunch at Fred's boat today. You guys are curious. Everyone's been asking about Fred's boat, Fred's boat, Fred's boat. That today we're gonna bring some treat and have lunch with Fred. And also we need this. What's this? This is the oil for the shaft of the propeller because we have some extra, we want to fill this up. Fred have more of this because today we're gonna go out and we need this in order to be safe because if something happened to the propeller, we have more oil that we need. Let's go. You're finally gonna go to Fred's boat to show you. It's just gonna be a, a sneak peek. We're not gonna show the entire boat because- a Snake peek or a sneak peek? Sneak peek, I always say wrong. Yeah, it's just <laughs> a sneak peek because Soon Fred's gonna have his own channel, so we cannot spoil that much. You're just gonna show a little bit. Let's go. Come with me. I do 
don't know if we're visiting Fred today or if you were visiting our old boat. That's our <laughs> old boat. Right there. We always like to come here to visit our old boat. Yeah. Guess which one is Fred's boat? No, it's not the huge one. This is our old boat. That's Fred's boat. It's huge. Meet Alvini. Fresh painted. Oh, it's beautiful. Can you give me the camera so you don't fall? <laughs> the boat's just freshly painted. It's beautiful. But we're not going to show that much. And that's it. That's a cut. <laughs> no, joke. We can show a little bit more. Just a little bit more. What's cold Europe. Here? Europe. <laughs> Welcome to Europe. It's yeah. Good to be back. We always call Alvini Europe because he has a small air conditioning. Check this out. <laughs> the size of my hand and the size of the air conditioning. <laughs> and the smell. And the smell of food. Always. Mm. Food. I, we, food. Dream, we dream with the day we have a stove and oven working on our boat. Not yet. Right. Food? Epoxy? Epoxy? Food? It's all the same thing. This is beautiful. Yeah. My winch. I think it's time to eat, right? Food. I'm really hungry. Food, 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 food. food. Guess who's, who is this guy? Can you tell what he's doing here? The captain? No. No, the captain. He's like, we hired someone. This is like the crew, you know? The crew. The crew. I yeah. am the crew. Yeah, you know what that means? What does that, what does that mean? We're going to go out today. Yeah. But before we do that, we need to turn this on. Coffee? Yeah. We need at least a little bit of coffee because we want to warm up the engine before we go out. So we need to turn these on first and then we can warm up engine yes we can take these off yeah. one more thing we need to do before we leave Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I never maneuver a boat with steering wheel in my life, only tiller. That's the first time we're gonna do it. We need a, a cable, it can be this one if you want to take this off, and he can hold us from there. Oh, we can take this one off. <laughs> yeah, I want to see us getting back to the spot in the marina. Yeah, to get there. Really? I was kind of nervous to get out actually. So now we're gonna visit his marina, at least going in front of his marina. Are we? Yeah.
get used to it. Our all our other two boats had tiller and not steering wheel. And this is the first time I actually maneuver on a steering wheel, so it's just like a process of getting used to it, but we will learn. In a heavy boat. Yeah, in a heavy boat. Our old boat was like three tons, this is like 14 tons, so. For 15, I guess. How are we? 6.7, almost 7. But we have current in our favor problem. That's why I'm doing both ways. This degree action and all the direction. 6.5 and 6.8 around. So 6.5? Yeah. 6.5. That's good, it's not bad. Where's our time left? There! There is our time left. <laughs> Fred's doing a time lapse the whole day there. <laughs> it's kind of a guy. Yeah, it's so our friend. Also, yeah, this guy has a beautiful aluminum board. This one. I want to be here as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the runner. Do you want to check the... Or you can stay here, I'll check. Yeah, just slow down. I need the camera now. Come with me. I have something really important to check. because there, there is some water on the beach and we need to check if it, this is uh, fresh water or salt water. Sad? Not sad. At least we know what's the problem probably. We just need to do it, but if I get sad, it's not gonna fix anything. We need to somehow fix it and that's it. But, of course, I don't like it. Everyone learned it somehow, and everyone didn't know what they were doing before they did the first time. If it was our old boat with the tiller, it would be fine. Why we did that? Just to get a little bit of segment, uh, momentum. We are getting there. Back safe. I mean, it was it wasn't that easy to maneuver on the dock, but we managed to do it. You're you doing good. well. I'm gonna learn. Very takes, good. Takes a little practice, but I'm gonna learn. Okay. And now we need to figure out exactly where the water is coming from because that's not I know normal. where it's coming from. But why, why? it's coming from? Yeah. Salgada. Salgada. Yeah. Mm. 
we just found out the problem. Yes. We the water out. is salty water. That's why the engine is not getting hot and we are losing a lot of water from the heat exchange yeah. because the water it's salty water that means that the inside of the uh, heat exchanger broke and we are actually we have, have a leaking we have a leak inside so that yeah. means that we spread salt water inside of the engine and that's not good no so first step done we know this is not working. The heat exchanger broke the pipe inside and the salt water was leaking to the fresh water and now we got salt water inside of the entire engine and to clean that we just emptied the whole system, took all the salt water off and wash the engine sometimes. Yeah, a few times, like maybe like three or four times we fill with fresh water and yeah. let it go and then fill with fresh water let it go and now just to guarantee that the engine is fresh inside, fresh water, there is no salt water inside of the engine. I got the hose on the end, the one that goes to the hot water tank, and I taste and it's not salty anymore, so... We can call a successful day today. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> we found some problems, but that's why you go out to try the engine, because you need to find the problems. If you don't find problems, maybe there are problems that you didn't find. If you find problems, at least you, s you know the problem. So what's the plan now? That's it, we need to go back to the dry. Yeah, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do though. <laughs> yeah, I mean like we are not gonna leave the marina with this huge tail behind. Yeah. Our propeller shaft seal is leaking and the system, the way it's meant to be, is to have oil inside and no leak at all. If there is a leak, that means that the retainer or the o-ring are bad. Even the bearing might be bad. And if there is a time to do it, it's now because we are on a boat yard that's easy to lift the boat. We don't need to think about it. The place we are gonna go after here, there is no possibility of lifting, lifting, lifting <laughs> this boat because it's too heavy. So it's time to do it right now, right? If we leave the system as it is, it's gonna have. We are gonna have salt water inside our boat, and mm, to no fix good. this, we need to take the boat out of the water because we need to replace all the parts under the water. Yeah, right? it's like a hole this big. <laughs> that means that if we don't open now, we're in trouble. Of course, we could just leave as it is. It's leaking a little bit, and then we put more oil and leaks. Oil yeah, leaks. That's, that's not a matter of safety as well yeah I, I don't want to have something that I'm always thinking is that okay is that okay yeah. if we need to stay two days away from the boat and then start leaking and yeah. we're not on the boat no we're not gonna do that but we want to tell you bigger news than that which one we found other problems on the engine yeah not that many problem number one yep. the yeah. problem number one the gearbox the gearbox the gearbox, we didn't give any maintenance to the gearbox back one year ago because we had the diesel generator right on the top of it. So we had no option. We either take everything apart or we couldn't touch the gearbox. We just replaced the oil and that's it. Now we found a leak on the gearbox and the gearbox now the gearbox now is available to take it off because we have no diesel generator on the top anymore. That means it's easy to take off. Problem number two. Yeah, so problem number two the camera is recording? Yeah, the camera is recording. So problem number two is that the heat exchanger broke inside. The heat exchanger has a pipe or many pipes, a honeycomb of pipes inside that divides the salt water from the fresh water. And the main problem we had on the sea trial was that the salt water and the fresh water mixed inside of the heat exchanger. And the weird thing is that we took this heat exchanger off a year ago and took to the, the shop that fixed that and they redo they redone the entire heating exchanger and now it has a problem again so we need to take that off and take to the shop and see what's wrong and fix that problem number three the bendix the bendix yeah that's a small problem but the starter motor has a bendix that's a part that's broken that the starter engine works perfectly fine until it doesn't for like three ti tries and then again fine again so we need to fix that. But problem number 3B. <laughs> yeah. The heat exchanger from this engine is the original one from the manufacturer. And the manufacturer stopped building this engine a month ago. That means that if we want to replace the honeycomb for a brand new one, we need to buy third party. We cannot buy from the same brand because it doesn't sell anymore. That leads us for three options. Three options. I'm gonna be quick this time. <laughs> option number five minutes away? Yeah, five <laughs> minutes. Yeah, option number one, we just take the heat exchanger off, we take to our welder and we 
fix the heat exchanger, the honeycomb, put back together, we replace the Bendix, we take off the, the gearbox? gearbox, we give maintenance to the gearbox, we need to redo the seal because we have a leak on the gearbox, so we need to fix the leak on the gearbox, we put back together, we redo the seal of the shaft of the propeller, put all together and we leave in January. We don't live in general. We test the boat, test, test the, the boat, boat test the boat, find and more try problems, to find more problems. Find more problems, fix more problems, test again. So we don't know how long it would take to be okay yeah. and to be li uh, reliable. Yeah, this first option would be something to go out and maybe need to sail for a while and then coming back next year to fix more problems. Maybe. Or not. Maybe yes, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But there is a huge question mark what there is inside of our engine after 23 years. That's something that I don't like. Option Bring number, number two. two. I think <laughs> would be much better to redo the mistake of the past. There is something we regret not doing back a year ago. <laughs> All the time people ask, so what would you do different on the refit? The main thing we would do different is back when we had the chance, we open up the hatch on the top of the engine room. We could have taken the engine off the boat, take it to a shop and really properly treat the engine, take it all apart and see how it's inside and check what we need to fix because this engine been sitting on the drive for 23 years and a lot of things might need maintenance that we don't know inside as we are going to be on the dry again open up the hatch take the entire engine off now we have a shop from someone that we trust that we can put the engine in we could work on the engine by ourselves with the help of fred and with the help of a mechanic that we know now and we could redo the entire engine paint the entire engine and have an engine that we can trust for years have something that's basically brand new but it's still it's 30 years old the mistake That's was not taking the engine when we did off. the whole refit yeah so what i like about this option is that we would know our engine inside out everything we would have an engine that we trust but what we, i don't like about this is that we have a engine that's made in brazil and that as soon as we leave brazil there's no way of finding parts for the engine that means we would need to ship from overseas and would always be a problem to find parts and mechanics that know about this engine. Problem number two, how long would it take to be done? That's another problem. That would be, that would take for us that are amateurs at least two months to do that. We, I mean like, no, but let's say one month if we do really work but a we lot. we need to do other things. So yeah, so we have more things to do. Longer. Yeah, that that's one of the main problems, it would take a long time. Plus... Problem number three, sometimes we might need to make some pieces that not yeah when you open up an engine that's been that being sitting there for so long you might find surprises and that's what we don't like because you cannot guarantee that's gonna take a month because you don't know what the surprises are gonna be and that brings us to option number three three option how many times did you say three already I you said know. problem number three option <laughs> number three everything is number three okay. am i number two no no, no. you're in the first one okay yeah so option number three would be buy a new engine yeah <laughs> yeah, we're no, we're not crazy. Let us explain. We have reasons to a, at least consider this option. The engine we have is made in Brazil, and most of the fishing, small fishing boats in Brazil, use the same engine as we have. That means that this engine has a huge, huge, huge market in Brazil. We can sell right now this engine for one third of the price of a brand new 54 horsepower Yammer engine. That's the one that we our dream engine. <laughs> If we, des we, if we decide to keep the engine and leave Brazil like in a year and let's say we are in the Caribbean and we decide to replace the engine this would be like a scrap engine no one is gonna pay anything for this engine because no one buy this kind of engine outside of Brazil we would sell it for its weight yeah it would be like not worth anything so that means that if we one day we want to replace the engine that's the right time because yeah. this engine has a market value here and actually we have one or two people already interested in buying this engine and that's a really good thing yeah. and if we go on this route that means we would probably will get a Yammer 54 horsepower at least and that's what we dream I of. I think buying a new one would be quicker than the other two options because we would just need to take the old one off to repaint the beach that we would that love would to great. and to do a new berth for for the engine room that we would need just to screw in place because we already have the, the holes for this. Yeah, by the way, a Yammer specialist came here to check the engine yeah. room and he said, no, there is nothing much we need to do. Yeah. Just as Roberto said, it's just the berth. Yeah. So that would be a 
quicker option of living quick and at the same time with something that is reliable and that we can find parts anywhere we go and that's something that's comfortable like yeah, yeah it would be much better to have an engine that we can fix anywhere we have spent the whole week thinking about it and calling people and trying to yeah. understand the options we have and now we are sharing with you yeah and we also had a live with our patrons to check their opinion yeah. it diverges <laughs> a lot a lot of people say just go sailing Yes, it's an option. If we go sailing, we need to come back. We rather stay a little bit longer in the marina than leaving and then needing to come back. We don't want to come back s anytime soon. Some and people are gonna say that there is an option number four that would be you can get an electric motor. Yeah, that's an option. We really like this option, but it's a much more complicated option as we are in Brazil. The electric motor would need to come from overseas and. It would, would it would take longer but sure. if you have any contacts that <laughs> you, you want to i don't know to revolutionize share. our boat and yeah make it electric just let us know we are open <laughs> to ideas we are not close to ideas but we need to decide that soon because it's already almost christmas and we clock's need to ticking. make yeah clocks ticking we need to leave the <laughs> boatyard so we want to make a decision quick well the only bad thing about the engine is the price yeah you, that would cost a lot but would be uh, i think in my point of view is just an investment to make the boat better It's of course gonna cost on the first you know on the short term but on the long run i believe would be worth yeah but if you know someone on yammer you can give uh, them a call and just say you should talk to duke and Robert. they're really nice people and they <laughs> deserve a brand new engine i'm just joking but i'm not joking because <laughs> it's a really good opportunity for us to have a relationships since day one of our brand new engine we yeah. want to have an engine that we're going to take care for years after all after all the work we have done on the on the diesel, diesel tank things. we deserve a new engine yeah the truth <laughs> is the boat got a new mess and now the engine room is like that's not nice you gave the boat a new mess and you didn't give me a new engine it's true we're just hearing odds talking yeah odds talking to us <laughs> true i think odd deserves a new engine don't you think we have great news yeah I think by the time you finish this video, because this is too long, <laughs> Fred already posts his first episode. If we can trust him because he said it would be... He just sent us a message saying he had, that he already added 6 seconds of a 12 minutes video. 6 seconds? Fred, go back to work, you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, but It's already a step, you know. Yeah, that's a huge step. And you guys should go to his new channel and give some love to him because Fred if you guys like watching what we are doing you need to thank Fred because he's a huge 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 part of our channel and I think his channel is gonna be awesome show Alvini some love yeah but for now I think I'm gonna stop talking because I'm talking too much as usual if and this you have video, any, any opinion just leave a comment on the yeah. session let us know if we are crazy video. about thinking about <laughs> replacing the engine tell us if we are insane that we just should go sailing or tell us that you should do what you feel like you should do because it's a you know like sometimes I think we need to think about what's best for us and for the boat because of course for the content it would be much better just to leave anyway but it's our lives it's just like sometimes we need to do what's good for us also and we also can do our 12 volt, volts panel we can do some other projects meanwhile. there's plenty to do we always have work to do and if we stay here for another two months you guys are gonna have content trust me we are gonna <laughs> post some content like <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, Let's that's welcome it. aboard our new patrons for this week. So, welcome on board. Chris, Hui, David, Orlando. And we also want to thank a donation to our PayPal. Thanks so much, Kevin. Guys, thanks so, so much. We really appreciate your support. And now, go show Fred some love. Yeah. yeah. See you guys next week. See you.